everyone, it's Ross. Uh, today's video, we're going to talk all about my favorite figs of 2018. Um, only in terms of taste. So these are the tastiest figs I had all year. Um, I did get to rate a lot of figs and only rated the figs that were the varieties that uh, were a good representation of the variety. Obviously, certain things will change over the years as things mature. Um, you know, just because I give a rating to something now doesn't mean it's set in stone forever. So, um, you know, you have to obviously understand that these things can improve. Um, some things, some varieties will have a bad year for just various different reasons. And uh, consistency is very difficult with fit. You need to have the appropriate level of moisture, soil, and in the air. You need to have um, right amount of heat obviously all that varies from um really the location in which you're growing these figs has a huge impact on the flavor so even though i'm saying that these figs were a 10 or a 9 or an 8 um doesn't mean they're going to be that for you and obviously you have different taste buds um this should honestly all everything i just mentioned should go without saying but i feel like uh some people are easily confused by this kind of thing. Assumption needs to be set. So my rating system is pretty simple. Um, anything that's about a, five, a one to a five is a fig that I really just don't enjoy eating and quality just. Um, a six is a pretty high quality Braba. An eight I would consider a keeper. A 10 is, um, they're just in a class of their own so far. Um, I've given out very few 10s. In previous years, my 10s have only been given out to figs that I have eaten directly from California, that were grown in California. So me grow, living in Pennsylvania, growing all these varieties of figs, there's a pretty significant difference in quality between my figs and who lives dry warm climate it doesn't mean that I can't get a high quality fig and I have definitely done that this year I've I've proven that to myself but um, the quality is certainly super consistent in a place like California very easy to achieve that quality um, you know so for me I have like a, a separate rating system in my mind that is completely dedicated to the figs that have been that I've tried from California. I know what these figs can taste like and grown properly, uh, and when ripened properly. So, um, I've kind of strayed away from that, and have definitely selected these figs um, with it in mind, but. Not necessarily the California figs pushing everything down. So I've actually assigned some tens this year. The only tens I had assigned previously were figs that were from California. So uh, this is directly from a rating system of Pennsylvania grown figs. Um, a nine is something I would consider to be comparable to a fig, to an average fig grown in California. I think that's pretty um even an average variety that i've tried you know just your run-of-the-mill average you know nothing special variety that i've had from california is pretty uh equivalent to a nine here in my climate which is pretty and pretty nuts to think about but uh that's how it is it is how it is i still love these figs and i don't want to finish anybody else that's growing them in a climate such as mine but um there really is a huge difference in quality. So let's get into it now that we've gotten all that out of the way. Um, you know, I will say that without a doubt, Black Madeira and Hold It On Blanc are my two best figs. The flavor. Now, flavor isn't everything, obviously, and Black Madeira and Hold It On Blanc both need a head start in my climate. You need a greenhouse or you need some way to wake them up early. Otherwise, you just won't get fruit. So,
So even though they're very tasty, but they're extremely late. And um, I would recommend anybody that is a collector, um, that is taking growing figs seriously, and you want to try these different varieties, I would certainly recommend any of the Col de Dom figs. Blanc so far is my favorite one. It has the texture of a of a of like pancake batter. Extremely thick. Thick and jammy and gooey. Those are really good descriptions. There's very few figs I've eaten or ever that I would describe as gooey. And gooey is a I think a really pleasant texture when it figs uh, for myself. I hope that kind of makes that uh, more understandable. You know, so it's not only a really tasty fig, but the but the texture itself is uh, is out of this world. And I've I've definitely considered the texture, as well as the skin, because all that really plays a part. Um, can't talk about flavor. You can't give a fig a rating without talking about the skin and the texture. And I would, re I would recommend, for most of you, getting a thin skin variety is going to taste better. If you live in California or somewhere extremely hot, I've heard and it is recommended that you get thicker skinned. If you live in a humid climate, um, I would recommend getting thinner skin. Golden Amblanc Blanc and uh, Black Madeira both have a thick skin. And even though they have a thick skin, I still thoroughly enjoy them here. So you can grow those two varieties anywhere. They will taste phenomenal. Um, what I will say about Black Madeira, though, is that there's many Black Madeiras. There's only one Col de Dom Blanc. There are figs that go by the same name as Black Madeira by different names. They're, they're very similar, if not the same. Maybe there's slight adaptations, kind of like one hardy Chicago style fig versus another hardy Chicago style fig, or one Violette de Bordeaux type fig versus another. Black Madeira is very closely related to Figo Preto. There's multiple Black Madeira strains from different sources. Originally, this fig was called Violetta, is what we believe, uh, coming from Portugal. So, um,. You know, it goes by many names, and I just recommend that you get one of the names. It doesn't matter which one. Um, I haven't certainly haven't found any of them to have an edge over the other yet. I will say that Black Tuscan, I have it on pretty good authority that a lot of people believe that Black Tuscan is a couple weeks, I should say, one or two weeks earlier. And all of the other Black Madeira types. So that could certainly help you out depending on where you live. Um, now, if we go down the list, we get to the nines. Doors Dark is certainly one of my favorites. It's, uh, it's a hearty Chicago type that I find to be very, very tasty. Um, Cavalieri is a fig that I got to eat pretty close to perfect ripeness on a relatively mature tree. And I will say that fig is probably, it could be even tastier than Black Madeira and Col de Dom Blanc. The fact that it wasn't exactly perfect, um, the fig splits a lot, but it could very well be the best tasting fig I have, if I were to guess. Um, if, I were to, if I were to assume an, a, a rate of improvement, Cavalieri. I really do. I think if you if you can grow Cavalieri in a dry climate, pretty damn close to the best one. Um, I think it's going to be hard to beat. For me, though, it, it is not a fig that that I suggest growing, and I'm growing it because of its uh, definitely its high taste qualities, but sort of late, and it splits a lot. It splits even down the side. So, you know, I can't really uh, recommend it for somebody in a humid climate, but if you live in a dry climate, you would certainly want to grow that one at some point down the road. Um, Col de Dom Roja, any of the Col de Doms, Col de Dom Grease, 
Um, Cold and Omnoir. They're all really, really tasty figs, guys. They have a intense jammy flavor and texture um, that that it just blows you away. Italian 258 is another favorite of mine, but I think so far, uh, maybe if I had put Italian 258 in the greenhouse, I could say it was a 10. But I didn't get a Italian 258 that was as perfect as. Some of the black Madeiras I got this year. Only because my black Madeira ripened so late that I'm able to put it in the greenhouse and completely cover it from the rain and keep it in a dry, pretty dryish simulation, right? Um, I would imagine though that Italian 258, it tastes very similar, has a very similar taste profile, black Madeira. I would venture to guess it's probably um, just as good. I mean, it, obviously it tastes slightly different, but um, you know, if you're worrying about which one should I have, Black Madeira or Italian 258, simple answer, if you live in a dry climate, get Black Madeira. If you live in a, uh, a humid climate, get Italian 258. Um, or alternatively, if you live in a shorter season climate, get Italian 258. If you live in a longer season climate, get Black Madeira. Um, I also got to try this Izmir Knot. It was labeled as Izmir, but we found out through a little bit of digging around that it's not actually Izmir from, um, from, uh, from Donov, but in fact, it's something we don't know what it is, but it's really, really good. It reminds me a lot of Col de Don Blanc. It's a phenomenal fig. Noir de Barbentain also reminds me of Black Madeira. It has a very similar flavor. Um, it's said to be quite early ish compared to Borges Sot Noir, which is its very close relative. There are many Borges Sot Noir figs in existence Brojoto Nero, Borges Sot Negra, Borges Sot Negra Ramada. There are many of them that have slight adaptations from the others, and Noir de Barbentain is one of them that. Uh, a grower named Bode in France believes to be more rain rain resistant and more and earlier. So, for me, I actually have this one in the ground, and uh, it's an impressive fig. Certainly is, and one day if it proves to be so early and rain resistant, I would probably get rid of black Madeira completely, without a doubt. If I can find a, an earlier black Madeira with similar flavor. That doesn't split. I will completely get rid of Black Madeira. There's absolutely no reason to have it, um, other than ha having it for the name. But why am I growing figs for the name? I'm growing figs to eat. I'm not growing figs for visual appearance, right? I don't grow many. Notice, I don't grow many Ramada figs. Why is that? Well, I don't grow them for appearances, guys. <laughs> um, Smith. Without a doubt, my best overall fig right now. It's tasty, reliable, it's early, rain resistant. White Triana is another one that I was thoroughly impressed with this year. I've had it for years now. Um, last year, it was super productive on a probably, a, I think it was either in its second or third year, it put on 40 figs for me, a five gallon size container. That's really impressive, and uh, if you let them hang on the tree long, which you can, because it's actually rain resistant, and if you can protect them from critters, you will get an unbelievably tasty fit. Um, probably be showing you guys photos of some of these. Things. Let's do that. If I go to this album here, which I showed you guys before, um, I did a whole review of every fig I've eaten this year. Not every fig I've eaten, but every fig I took a photograph of. Um, I put it in an album, which I believe is in the description of this video. So you can go to this album and check out all the photos that you want. As you're, wa as you're watching and listening to me, you can go through this and really pay attention. Here's Smith, 9258. What are we on right now? White Triana. This is White Triana. You can see it's really dark, 
not too dark, but it's a darker interior than most of these style of figs. There's a very sim there's a big similarity between Oitriana, Canadria, Atriano. Uh, there's like probably 20 of them that are very commonly found. This one I find has the darkest red interior. It has the best berry flavor. It was it's complex, very sweet. There's a lot of honey in here, believe it or not. And the texture is extremely jammy and thick and gooey, just like my Col de Don Blanc, which I was completely blown away by. It was like eating cake. So having eaten this Col de Don Blanc fig, and then I think only a day or two after eating White Triana, I could not believe how close they actually were in texture. And for that reason, White Triana is insane. Um, it's also like a mid-season fig, whereas Col de Don Blanc is late. So at a certain point, if I can get White Triana and confirm it to be, you know, uh, as just as good or really close to as good as Col de Don Blanc, why should I have any of the Col de Doms? There's a lot of hard um, decisions to make at certain points of this year, or next year that's going to have to happen. Um, you know, I will certainly be getting rid of a lot of figs that you guys may think, wow, that's, that's crazy, you know, because they have such a high reputation. But out of my climate, if I can find an alternative that's mid-season versus a fig that I have that's late season, why do I have that fig? It doesn't make, doesn't make any sense. Um, now, what else do we have here? Zafiro is another nine that I thought was incredible. Um, we can find Zafiro in here for you guys. Zafiro is a honey fig. Here, it has a dark skin and exterior that I'm pretty blown away by because this combo is not very often found, and I find that a lot of honey figs, when they're exposed to a lot of rain, it dilutes the flavor, and the honey figs are certainly ruined. This fig, I don't know why, maybe because it's unrelated to most honey figs, it is uh, pervious in the rain. In like tons of rain, this fig had no problem. Um, I was blown away. It has a really interesting uh, honey flavor that's complex. Skin tastes like um, coconut nutty flavor. That is actually quite distinct. It's not even like something that you have to be a sommelier or a wine taster to figure out. You know, like it's it's pretty pretty close. It's pretty blatant, right? Then we go on to the eights here. Kind of, I want to skip through a lot of these these eights. We talked about the really good ones, um, but there's something interesting in the eights uh, I'm going to mention. I have a lot more figs that I rated as eight, but these are the tastiest ones of the eights. I have like two different tiers of eights. Um, these are the tastier ones. You can go into my spreadsheet, which is also, and the link is also in the description here. Go to the My Figs tab, and you can see all the ratings I've given out this year. Whether they were sevens or sixes or eights, they're all in here. And this is a really good tool I wish people used more of. Free, and it's obviously available to all of you guys. Now, Babera Branca is a fig that is very interesting. The first year I've had it, Babera Branca has a unique flavor profile in that it is a honey fig, your typical honey fig, but it has an extra complexity in that there is a fruity berry flavor added into that, which makes it really way more interesting than a fig like LSU Champagne. For example. That's like the standard honey fig in my mind. And um, Babera Branca just blows LSU Champagne out of the water in terms of flavor. Um, Blanche de Duce Saison is another interesting one. It has an extremely jammy texture. Um, it tasted like, or the texture was like of literal jam. 
Like it was as close to jam as any fig, as any fig I've ever had. Um, really different though from White Triana and Cold and Blanc. Like it's a different type of jammy. It was interesting. Really excited to try more of it. Um, Blavetta Campos, a really small fig from Ponds. Uh, and it doesn't look like much, but when you taste it, it is actually very, very good. It has a complex berry flavor, and it is extremely thick and jammy. It's got a nice texture to it. it. Makes that fig on another level for me. Brandon Street Unknown, uh, another good fig. Light berry flavor. Sandrosa has another one that I found to be really tasty this year. Um, I didn't get many of them that weren't boiled by the rain. It seems like a late fig. But this one is, uh, it could very easily be a 9. I, can, I certainly can see myself next year giving this fig a 9. The Manel, another amazing fig that has a complex berry flavor combined with honey. Um, Daloso Belfior, nice tasting berry fig, all around great fig. De La Roca has a similar flavor to the Col de Doms, but it seems more reliable. It seems more precocious. Uh, it seems just a tad earlier, perhaps. For that, I'm keeping it and seeing if it can beat out any of the Col de Doms. Trace Displace, uh, another good tasting fig. Um, this one, I, I have a feeling, will come into its own a little bit. I you know my friend Maddie gave me this, and I did get to rate this one, and he told me that my tree isn't mature enough, but um, I certainly got some high-quality figs off of my tree. I did. Um, to give it an accurate rating at the time, but I, have, I do have a feeling, I think he's right, that there is going to be a pretty significant improvement. At least I hope. Um, if not, um, it's probably going to be a fig that I keep only because it's early and may in inevitably get rid of it. It uh, will be a sad sight, but uh, it's something I got to do if I'm going to get down to maybe ten, five to ten varieties. Um, let's see, where are we at here? Gozo Girl GM172. This fig has got flavor, man. Uh, this one's probably going to be a 9 next year. I definitely see that one coming a 9. Um, I just need to... It's, it has a little trouble with the rain. Get it a little bit of an earlier start. Uh, it'll be more productive this year. It actually is a productive fit. And we'll see what it does. Little Ruby, believe it or not. As little as this... It's the smallest fig I have, but it is very tasty. It packs a punch. Long to do... Incredible fig. Um, this one's probably my top 10 overall, for sure. In my top 10 overall, for sure. LSU Scott's Black. Uh, really tasty and underrated. It's probably the tastiest um, LSU fig. Probably is. Um, problem with it, it splits a little bit in the rain. Doesn't like the moisture too much. I mean, you can deal with it, but inevitably it will split. Um, and it has a really nice berry flavor and a lot of sweetness coming from a lot of honey that that fig produces. Uh, it's got a, like a similar flavor profile, pretty close to like um, Thor's Dark. Um, what else is this fig close to? If you go to my spreadsheet, the flavor groups. Yeah, it's pretty close to Sultane. I think that's a pretty accurate description there. Uh, Verdino del Nord. No, but I also kind of get a little bit of Black Madeira in LSU Scott's Black, believe me. Malta Black, of course, it's very similar to my Azores Dark. Uh, but I haven't gotten them nearly as perfect as Azores Dark to give Malta Black a 9. Moscatel Preto, uh, my friend Jamie loves this fig. It's really tasty. Um, like I said, one of my better eight. It's got a complex berry flavor combined with honey. And my friends have been describing caramel instead of honey. Um, 
That'll be interesting. If I can get that fig to taste like caramel, that would be really cool. I'm certainly boosted up another notch. Um, but I haven't really tasted a honey fig. Well, not a honey fig, but a berry fig that had honey in it that tasted different than honey. You know what I mean? Um, most berry figs, when you have that honey coming in, it's just honey. It's not. It's not caramel. So. I don't know we'll see i'm excited to try more of them next year my tree's actually pretty old it's like three years old it was it was last year my biggest tree believe it or not um you know beak can't beat this fig overall i mean it's in my top 10 for sure of top overall figs any violet de bordeaux type is incredibly good and this one really impressed me this year they take a little bit of time, I think, to mature. But it could just be the fact that it was a tissue culture plant. And I received it. That's why it took so long to mature. Raspberry latte, another one that's really good. Intense berry flavor. I wish I could get it perfect. If I could get it perfect, it would easily be a nine. Raven de Calci Baud. This is a new fig for me. Amazing. I would consider this in the same category as like GM172 and Sandrosa in that they really impressed me it could very easily become nines i think a lot of these figs could become nines that i'm talking about ron de bordeaux amazing it's in my top 10 overall the coral black is a fig that i find to be very good i'm waiting for that berry flavor to really kick in for me um it does well here for a late fig it handles the rain pretty well Ripens its crop in a pretty short window. I'm happy to have Socorro Black in this climate. as one of the very few late figs that actually perform well. Body from Bass. This is an incredible fig, guys. Uh, it's got a unique flavor compared to any other fig I've tried. The Barra Branca has a unique flavor for me. Um, this year, that was the standout. Zafiro has a unique flavor for me. Between Zafiro, Babera, Branca, and Suwadi, those are the three most unique and interesting figs I have. Um, Strawberry Verte, amazing. It's very similar to Blanche de Duce Cezanne, but overall, it's just a great fig. It's not as jammy as Blanche de Duce Cezanne is. Um, you can't beat, it's hard to beat Strawberry Verte, man. Standard. It's a standard, really good fig. Brett from Baud. It means sugar, I believe, or sweeteners. Um, it's supposed to be very sweet. I haven't gathered that yet, but it is a complex berry fig. Uh, it's got an interesting berry flavor to it, and uh, the texture is very thick and very jammy, just like Obleta Campos and Old Adams and all problem with it it splits a little bit for me so I, i'm i'm on the fence of whether or not i should keep it but we'll see what happens sweet joy this one tastes like marshmallows what else is there to say it's amazing one of the few honey figs i've had that separates itself from um, the others and then we've got sultane which we talk about a lot but i haven't shown you guys a lot of it because my tree had died this winter this past winter uh, i replaced the tree we're going to put it in the ground come spring it's quite hardy rain resistant mid-season and we'll get a lot of figs off of it in the ground um, i should probably have one in a container which i may do actually i'm going to graft sultane to a limb of one of my trees and uh top-notch fig it's a fruity berry flavor combined with a lot of honey Bramo Unknown, along with Brandon Street Unknown, are very similar flavor profiles to me. They, they have everything in one fig. They have the sugar flavor, or the figgy flavor, they have the honey flavor, and they have the berry flavor. It's all in one. It's fairly interesting. Layers of flavor that you uh, would be really interested to try, I think. So, those are the top figs uh, of this year, guys. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this one. Learn from me. I would highly recommend joining this website. Um, 
or following me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, this is the kind of thing I post there rather than on my YouTube channel. Um, you know, I would have posted something like this weeks ago. I posted this on the 7th of December. Today is the 19th. No, you watching the video is not the This is the kind of thing that you see if you follow me on other forms of social media. You definitely see it there. So I, I recommend you guys follow me there. Um, if you want to see more videos like this of me sitting down, talking about different varieties, please let me know down in, in the video. Um, and give this one a thumbs up. It, it really does help my video out. There's only really a select group of you guys that are kind of interested in this kind of thing. I mean, all of my subscribers and even I mean, just everybody in, in the world. There's only so many people that will sit down and listen to me talk about big varieties. So, um, you know, I'm going to try to do more videos like this on an annual basis. But, uh, you know, if you really, really want me to do something like this, let me know down in the, in the Try to see if I can. Otherwise, um, I'll catch you off for the next one.